Hey, uh, once again, playing the Daisy standalone. My guy is waving again because I have F1 as my start uh, <coughs> start recording button, and uh, also F1 in the game is uh, <laughs> is that like wave motion. Um, so right now, uh, this is actually a character I've probably got about six hours on without having been killed, which is which is pretty good. Um, you can see I'm very well equipped. <coughs> I've got a fireman's axe, motorcycle helmet, sunglasses, you know, shoes, gloves. Uh, I've got a gun, an actual rifle with bullets. I've got a whole bunch of bullets uh, for it. Um, I've got a bunch of food. I've got uh, canteens, axes, you know, refillable water sources, um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, I've got a pistol as well and a magazine for the pistol. So, uh, yeah, so... I'm, I'm pretty happy with my uh, situation. Um, basically, I'm just going to, for the majority of this video, I'm just going to be traveling. And uh, so I figured I would do some recording while I was uh, while I was doing that. Um, pull my axe out just in case. I'm playing on a server that, <clears throat> it's, it's my lunch break right now. So it's the middle of the day, uh, EST. And this is an EST server, so there aren't very many people on. I think there's like five other people on the server. And I'm way in the middle of nowhere, basically. Uh, so I'm hoping not to run into anybody um, at this time. Because yes, while interacting with other players is pretty much the meat of the experience, um, I have a friend who just picked up the game, and I'm actually going to meet him uh, close to the coast where he spawns with nothing to pass on some stuff to help get him started and enjoying the game. So I'm going to try to make it down to where he is on the coast, without being killed and, you know, losing everything and ending up no better than he is. Um, but I just figured I would record, share some of the beautiful scenery of, uh, I'm running this on maximum settings. You know, I recently upgraded my computer, so I've got a, um, <coughs> a, uh, uh, Intel i7-4771 processor, uh, GeForce GTX 770, uh, four gigabyte video card, um, sixteen gig of RAM, so uh, I can run this on. This is basically with all the settings as high as they go, um, and it's really pretty. And uh, show the scenery and also impart some tips that I have learned from my. You know, I've got about almost twenty hours played in this since I picked it up, and I had. <coughs> Probably a similar amount played in the um, the mod, the Arma 2 mod, before Standalone came along. Um, which, I mean, there are people with hundreds and hundreds of hours out there, but I, uh, I'm i enjoying it, so I figured I'd make a video and pass on what I learned to other people who are even newer than I am at it. Um, I've been using a really good interactive map. Um, I guess it's on daisydb.com, as in daisydatabase.com. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. If you uh, if you just Google Daisy standalone map, it's the the first result, and it's a really good interactive map that you can scroll around and zoom in and out, and it's marked with uh, you know loot locations and and all kinds of stuff, and it's also just good for navigating your way around. So I've been using that, and um, I actually went far far inland. Um, I don't know if uh, you know you might you might not know this, but um, in DayZ, new players always spawn on the coast. Uh, the map is, the map of the game is kind of a, uh, uh, um, like a, a coastline that goes along the south, <coughs> and then it curves along and goes up in the to the top northeast uh, is the water, and then it goes you know west and north is inland, and then it you know it terminates somewhere uh, in the inland with a you know, invisible barrier, but uh, it's very it's quite large and. Um, so new players always spawn on the coast, so the further north and west you go inland, um, the longer it takes to get there, basically, because <coughs> no new players start up there. And what that means, considering you, if you die, there's no, you know, you respawn with nothing, you start a new character, you always spawn on the coast. The further north, uh, west you go, the less likely you are to run into other players, and the more likely you will be to find loot that has not already been taken. Uh, currently... <coughs> Currently, uh, 
here's a sign. I'm trying to figure out, make sure I'm going in the right direction. So I've got the map open on my other monitor. So let me just see. This screen is going to freeze when I alt tab there. Um, Buonho. Okay. Okay, I know where I am now. Um, yes, I want to go down this road to the right. Um, where's the actual road? Oh, I guess it's just the dirt track. Uh, the, the currently loot does not respawn. Um, eventually, obviously, it will. Um, currently now, though, if you know someone picks something up, you know nothing respawns there. So the way that they're getting around that is most of these servers uh, do a server reset every four hours. So basically resets all the items and uh, zombies and all that stuff. Uh, it doesn't affect your character because your character is, is separate. Um, in DayZ, your character is persistent across all servers, so no matter which server you log into, you will be in the same place and you'll have the same equipment, even if you were, you know, last played on a different server. So your, your character will be unaffected, but it resets the world so all the loot comes back. Um, but the, the further from the coast you get, the more likely you are to find houses that nobody's been to since the last reset. So you can get really good loot there, which is where I got all this stuff, especially the gun and the bullets, which are some of the rarest stuff in the game, uh, and obviously the most sought after. Um, I found way, way up in the northwest, there's a, uh, a military base near the town of uh, Vidor, I think is, uh, is the town. And just outside it, there's a military base, and I went there. And I actually, you know, I got there on one play session, looted it, got a whole bunch of really good stuff, and then logged off, you know, in the woods next to it, and then logged on the next morning and went back. The server had reset, so all the stuff was back. And, uh, you know, got a bunch more stuff. And the, the loot tables are, are random. Um, you know, each loot location has a range of different things that can uh, be spawned there um so th they have like a type so for each loot location it'll be okay this is a weapon location or this is a supplies location but um within that type there's actually a fair amount of variation of what can spawn there so i was able to get a bunch of good different things uh and now you know my friend picked up the game he's starting out on the coast with nothing so i am slowly making my way back across the gigantic map from the far northwest to uh sort of the southeast and it's going to get progressively dangerous more dangerous for me as i go because um obviously the players not only do you spawn on the coast but the two largest cities in the game which uh you know as a extension of being the largest cities in the game also have the most loot uh spawn in them including guns and stuff uh, are also on the southern coast um cherno and electro are their shortened names that people use um and that's where a lot of the well-equipped uh, player-killing bandits like to hang out in those big cities because they tend to be a congregating point. So if you're looking for people to deal with, either friendly or hostilely, you know, that's a good place to go. I've been, you know, in my two real days, real-life days that I've been making this journey to this military base and back, you know, I haven't seen another soul. I saw one other player pass me far in the distance uh, yesterday. But he didn't see me, and there was no interaction. So, you know, when when you're talking about miles and miles of territory, and, uh, you know, eight or nine people on the server, chances of you running into someone out here in the wilderness are, are pretty slim. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, as an extension of that, you may be asking, isn't this game where you're supposed to be, like, surviving a zombie apocalypse, why are there no zombies? Well, first of all, zombies only spawn in Daisy for the most part, uh, around where there are buildings. You know, they're supposed to be the zombies of the people who lived in those buildings or worked in that area, so, um, if you're out in the wilderness, like I currently am, with no buildings around, there wouldn't be any zombies out here anyway. Um, but there should be a fairly large number of zombies around the actual buildings, which obviously you need to go... Ooh, wait... No, I think that was just a rather amusing bug, which I will tell you about in a second. But uh, anyway, so you have to go to the buildings to get your supplies, and uh, the uh, buildings are where the zombies spawn, so that's how you keep up the encounters with the zombies. But right now, the game is in very early alpha, and the, actually the server architecture... Um, 
from what I understand, uh, the zombie AI is buggy and problematic, and the server, our current server architecture can't support that many AIs running around. So they're only spawning at about 10% or 5%, something in that range of, of their eventual numbers. So, you know, when you go into a big town in the game's current state, you'll only find, like, maybe two or three zombies in the whole town. Um, whereas eventually, you know, there'll probably be more like 20 or 30 zombies in that town. But, uh, so for right now, there aren't that many zombies in the game. But it's all, really, all about, uh, surviving <laughs> against other players anyway, because with this fireman's axe that I have, it kills zombies in one hit. So, whenever, uh, zombies are really not scary for me at, at this point with this character. When I see a zombie, I, you know, running up to me, I'm just like, Whoa! and he's dead on the ground, and that's the end of that zombie. And their, their numbers just aren't enough right now to, uh, to be a threat. You know, maybe at the point when they do add in, you know, they increase the number of zombies to their final level. You know, if I'm being swarmed by 20 or 30 zombies, then flailing with my fireman's axe is going to be a lot less effective. But uh, right now they pretty much just come one at a time. Sometimes two or three, but even two or three is pretty easy to dispatch when my axe kills them in one hit. I thought I knew where I was. But it seems to be taking me a lot longer than I anticipated to reach this next town. Still, look at that. Very pretty scenery here in Cherno. This is obviously, as you saw, the signs were in Russian. This is supposed to take place somewhere. I think it's in the Ukraine or something like that. I'm not sure exactly. It's kind of on the uh, on the coast of like the uh, Black Sea or something like that. Some some Russian-speaking area. Road is becoming paved. That's a good sign. Oh yeah, here's some buildings. Okay, so this is the town of. Well, the English translation is Vishnoi. Here's a sign. Let me see if this is actually where, where I'm. Where I want to be. Look at that. There's like a tower up there on the on the hill. I've actually heard heard tell of that. People call it Devil's Tower. I've never seen it before though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is the town that I thought it was. I do have to kind of keep an eye out for zombies, because even though there aren't that many, there's going to be at least a couple. Probably. Not guaranteed, but probably. Might as well check for loot on my way through. No sense uh, letting stuff go to waste. <coughs> but yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with this game, even though basically all I've done is uh, run around and collect supplies. You know, I've been doing that for 15 hours, and it's still fun, just because the you know the landscape and everything is so pretty, and there's always a sense of danger because if you run into another player, you never know what they're going to do. I've actually, you know, people tell horror stories about the kill on sight mentality of players in the game, and I'm 100% sh sure that that's true, and it does happen. But my personally, my only interactions so far have been friendly. Uh, actually, I felt uh, with a previous character who has since died, and you know, this is a—I've started over since then. But I actually fell and broke my leg, and I had a bunch of loot at the time. I didn't want to give up, so I was crawling. When you when you have a broken leg, you can only crawl. So like, as if I was prone, you know, you crawl like this everywhere because your leg's broken. And uh, the only way to fix it is—and this is actually the reason I'm carrying sticks now. You need to get sticks and rags, and you craft them together into a splint, and then you apply the splint, and that removes the broken leg status effect so you can walk again. And uh, So anyway, I, I didn't have sticks at the time, so I was crawling around everywhere trying to find sticks, and I actually ran into a pair of other players who were actually nice. At, oh, that's a zombie. And they actually, there she is. And now she's dead. Simple as that, when you've got an axe. Uh... You know, they, they, they actually helped me out um, and got me some sticks, and, uh, and then we went on our separate ways, so, you know, they didn't even really want anything from me in return, so there are friendly players out there. So I found some food. Um, I'm not going to go into it now because it's kind of complicated, the way food and water consumption works in this game, but uh, suffice it to say, and there are some great video guides you can find on YouTube if you just search, like, Daisy standalone food water. It's really complicated. You have like uh, food and water reserves in your body, but also your stomach size, and it absorbs from your stomach into your reserves, and then it is used based on your activity at a certain rate, and blah blah blah. blah. But um, 
basically you can store a lot more energy from food eating food in your body than um than you need the level of starvation is much much lower than your actual maximum storage so it actually makes sense uh rather than carrying food around to actually eat all the food you find until the game starts telling you that you're stuffed because uh you still consume it at a set rate and it makes more sense to carry it inside your body um, rather than taking up your inventory space with food and then eating it later. So um, I actually had reached the stuffed level and then found all this food, which is why I'm, I have so much. But um, I'm going to eat some of it now because I just found another thing of food on the, on the ground that I'm going to pick up and replace it with these sardines that I just ate. I actually have a can opener. Um, a lot of people report dying in this game because they... Uh, they're starving, and they find food, but it's in cans, and they have no can opener. Can openers are pretty rare. You can also op open food with axes and crowbars, but then you spill some of the food. So, you know, the food item will have a percentage of how much is left in it. And uh, a lot of times, if you open it with... Uh, if you open it with a... Uh, I just minimize the game so I can kind of check out my trajectory on the map again. But um, if you open it with... A tool that is not a can opener, you spill some of the food in the process, and it, you get less. Percent, the percentage goes down to anything between thirty and seventy percent. Um, it's random, so obviously having a can opener is ideal, but they are pretty rare. Here's a water pump. You can drink these, drink water from these, and a lot of times it's good to refill your water just by mashing "drink" as I just did. And now the game might start telling me that my stomach is full, but. And I have ca I have water with me, obviously in canteens. But you know, if I don't have to use that, I might as well use the water uh, from the pump, since uh, I'll keep my reserve saved for later. Here's a can of tuna. I drink this soda. See, this is all about inventory management. I've got all these things that give me extra pockets, but um, I'm still, you know, finding new stuff all the time, and. Uh, I just don't have space to carry anymore, so it becomes a game of what do I want to get rid of to pick up the new stuff. Oh, the bug that I mentioned before when I heard that zombie on the road and there wasn't a zombie there. Yeah, apparently uh, they're, they're going to be adding all kinds of animals into the game uh, once the server architecture can support more AI critters roaming around. Um, which, you know, it's related to the same reason there aren't that many zombies now. There also aren't wild animals right now. Um, eventually you're going to be able to hunt wild animals, kill them, skin them, cook them, make stuff out of the skins, all that stuff. Um, but they're the only animal that's currently in the game are rabbits that you can't do anything with. They're just like scenery. But the AI that they're using to run the rabbits is the same AI that runs the zombies. And so occasionally, uh, much to the chagrin of people who are playing the game, the rabbits uh, scurrying along the ground will make the zombie sound effects and uh, it, it's a bug because they're using the same AI that, that they've reported so you know you'll be just walking through a field and all of a sudden you'll hear like the zombie growl and uh, scare the crap out of you but it's just because there's a rabbit running through the grass at your feet <coughs> which is kind of amusing all right, so I need to keep going southwest which I believe Actually, I have a compass too that I found. Southwest, southwest, yeah, that way. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Southeast, southeast, yeah, this way, which is the way the road is going. So I just want to make sure I was following the road the correct direction. I am taking me down towards the coast, where I may immediately be shot and have all my stuff stolen. I'm fully anticipating that to happen. I'm going to take, like, uh, you know, like two or three hours of real life time walking back down there, and then I'm going to immediately be shot and killed or something. Oh, that's a holster. It's empty, though. I currently have two holsters with guns in them, as well as this rifle. Here's my rifle. There it is. I've got a whole bunch of bolts for it. I've got a. Ooh, that was a weird bug. I've got a. Uh, bayonet attached to it. I don't particularly want to fire it because A, ammo is scarce, and B, 
it will attract every zombie and potentially any other players in the area to the sound. You know, like I said, guns are a hot commodity, and if someone can sneak up on me and kill me to take my gun, if they don't have a gun, you know, they would certainly try to do so, and I cannot claim to be the most... Oh shit the most attentive person in the world when I'm playing these games, so it is highly likely that someone who is better at it than me could sneak up on me and kill me and take my stuff. I don't want that to happen particularly. Yeah, did you hear that? That's also a, a bug in the game, which is seems to be designed purely to scare the crap out of players. Uh, there's like an, an ambient track that just plays in the background all the time. What is that? An Atlas Bipod. Attach that to my gun? Oh, I can, neat. Don't know if it'll actually work. It's not like I'm laying prone and shooting that much, but uh, still pretty cool. Uh, anyway, so um, there's like an ambient sound track that plays, which is just on loop currently. It's not really particularly related to what's around you, and that's what's making the sound of the wind and the uh, the birds and crickets and all that kind of stuff. And so apparently on the in, in the ambient track, just randomly as part of the, the sounds in the sound file that is the ambient track, is the sound of a gate closing. So every once in a while you'll just be walking and you'll hear this sound, which is the same sound that a iron gate makes when it is closed in the game. And so people will freak out because you'll be you know, th you'll be looting or focusing on something and all of a sudden you'll hear that and think somebody is around when actually there is nobody around at all. So it's kind of dangerous, too, because knowing that, knowing about that bug, you start to dismiss it. You're like, oh, there's nobody around, it's just that bug. But then that actually is the sound effect that gates make when they open and close, so it could actually be someone sneaking up on you. And then you might die because you think it's just the bug again, and it's not. Luckily that hasn't happened to me yet, but it's always something I think about. So we have left that town behind, and we're on our way to the next... I'm not going to go up to that tower castle there. Not now. I'll come back someday. I don't want to risk it, especially when uh, I have a, a friend waiting for me. Not literally waiting for me right now, but he's going to log on later and he's going to be down at the coast. And uh, at that point, I'd like to be in the vicinity so we can meet up without him having to wait an hour for me to get there. Looks like kind of an old medieval castle. That must be like a visitor center or something. Third person view. Here's me. I have a big backpack. And uh, <coughs> a much bigger backpack than I used to have. So more inventory space. And also uh, this tactical vest, which my arms are currently clipping through. But it's body armor, so I can take some more shots if someone does start to shoot at me. And it has more pockets on it. You can see my rifle there on my back. And, uh, I've got a, a pistol in my... In my attack vest, in my axe. Whoa. There's actually not much difference in um, sound generated, or not sound generated, there is a big difference in sound generated. There is not a very big difference in um, uh, energy and water consumed when you're sprinting versus jogging. This is jogging, and this is, you know, running. And you obviously you're moving faster when you're running. It doesn't actually make you need to drink or eat much sooner. Uh, it does, however, create a lot more noise, which can be an issue if you're trying to avoid zombies. They will aggro on you from much further away if you're uh, if you're running than if you're jogging. All right, I need to look at the map briefly to figure out where I currently am. Okay, so I still need to follow the paved road, which is the one I'm currently. Heading down. I'm playing on a 24 hour daylight server right now. Uh, <coughs> I appreciate what having a day night cycle does for the game. It, obviously, it's more tense, more realistic, and more, uh, in some ways, more fun to have it be dark out, but it's just the darkness right now is so dark that it is nearly impossible to see anything, and so it's it's just really more of a pain in the ass than it's worth. So, uh, 
especially when I'm trying to gear up, you know, when I'm trying to get myself set up so that I don't get immediately killed. It just makes more sense for me to go on a server where I know it's going to be daytime, so I can look for items and stuff without feeling like I'm uh, being hampered by the fact that I can't see anything. Once I'm fully geared and, you know, my friend's set up too, we may switch to a server with an actual day-night server, uh, day-night cycle, so that at least we'll feel like we have a, uh, a fighting chance, but so here's a big town coming up. This is, uh, Nadezino, I think? Possibly. I might be looking at the town on the map, but there should be a sign. I'm going to just approach it from the field here, just in case, running along the road. Any more populated parts of this game tend to make you a target. Not that I, again, it's lunchtime. There's only like four other people on the server. They're probably down on the coast somewhere. I do not expect to run into anybody here. But of course, just because I say that, I'm probably going to get sniped from one of these buildings or something. But uh, hopefully that won't be the case. There might be a couple more zombies up here for me to axe. There's a nice little church here. Actually, I'm coming up on a half an hour, so I'm probably going to end this video when I uh, get up here into the town. Maybe once I hook up with my friend later, I'll, uh, I'll do another video of us running around, which will probably be a little more interesting, because we may actually encounter stuff, and uh, it won't just be me running down roads and talking. Pretty neat looking church. Russian Orthodox looks like, which makes sense for the area this is supposed to be. Kind of a big building over there. This is a decent sized town, which probably means it has uh, at least a couple zombies in it. Also probably means that there, uh, there's a greater chance that players would gravitate towards it, although we're still pretty far from the coast, so I'm not that concerned about running into another player just yet. Especially with the population. Pretty low. Can't actually go inside this church. Huh. Okay. Almost all the buildings you can... Oh, there's a zombie. Dead. Almost all the buildings you can go inside now. Um, but obviously there are a few exceptions to that church being one of them. A nice big building ahead of us. I'm going to go run in there and see what's in there. And then probably... I'll end the video. And I've got a yellow chain, which means I'm losing server connection. Wonderful. Well, that may be a good place to end the video anyway, because if the server is going down, I uh, need to exit the game anyway. But I'm just going to run back here just in case. I don't know where my character was last standing when it last received information. I really hope I don't log back in to find myself have been killed by that zombie, because the game... Uh, you know, my, my connection dropped and, and the zombie was standing there or something and murdered me on the server end. But I think that's where I'm going to end the video, so uh, I'll post some more videos soon. Thanks for watching.